Welcome back. What I'd like to spend this session reviewing is, um, you know, something a little bit more immersed in using three dimensions practically, like you would in a real problem. So what I've done here is I've hung this, you know, this crate and uh, it's the, the, the green color is the crate and I don't know how heavy it is, right? But I do know that I have these three cables that are holding it up. I have the the pink one, I have the purple one, and I have the yellow one. And uh, after I take a look at things, I I uh, decide I'm going to measure the tension in the uh, in the yellow one, and I find out that it's at a hundred pounds. So I know that you know the yellow one is way taking a hundred pounds of the load, and my goal is finding out what the weight of that box is. Now, thus far, we've we've kind of navigated our way through this, kind of felt our way through, and we should have all the tools we need to be able to solve this type of problem. However, it's going to take some work on our side. We're going to have to sum forces in the x direction, sum them in the y direction, sum them in the z direction. We're really making sure that we can handle the setup and the algebra for anything that's going to get thrown at us. Now, that said, um, one of my favorite, I, I'm I'm kind of learning how to play chess right now, and one of the people I love listening to is Josh Waitzkin, and one of the things he says, um, he's just, a, he's just a, it seems like a great guy, it's great listening to his lessons, and one of the things he says is, you only get out as much as you put in. So on my side, that means that, uh, let's say I'm, I'm learning an ending, you know, like a rook and a pawn ending, and um, I read over the material, and I have a good intuitive understanding of what it is, um, and that, that, then I move on. Another way that I can go over that material is I set up three chess boards and I walk through step by step, looking at every step and trying to understand the pushes and the pulls of, uh, different strategies throughout, you know, my rook and pawn endgame. Well, one of those, I'm going to have a much better understanding than the other. Now I bring that up because I encourage you to do the same. You can spend the next eight minutes looking over this lecture and feeling like you have a basic feel, a good feel of how to do these types of problems. But I've seen over and over again, people who feel like they have a good understanding of the material, but when they're put on their own to prove it, to prove their knowledge, they have an enormous trouble. And I think the reason is because it's easy to be a lazy learner. If you're going to take the initiative to spend to learn this material, take some time and learn it right. So as I'm going through all the steps, I'm going to say something like, all right, now take a minute. I'm going to do all the material. I'll show it to you. Put the video on pause, pause everything. Do all the work you think you know yourself. Make sure you get it through and make sure your results line up with what I have. I'm not going to explain step by step, but you will be able to see everything I've done. Now that said, let's, uh, let's take a look at this and uh, tackle it. So first, what I'd like to do is uh, I'm going to make my free body diagram. It's it's always the first thing we do. Um, we're going to have force. I'll just say force W for force weight. Um, I'm going to have here force of B. We're going to be it. We're going to take advantage of the fact that the uh, force is always aligned in the same direction as the wire, and we'll use that to figure out our angles, but right now we're just doing forces. Force due to C. Whoops. And finally our force due to D. And you know I'll put in some of these distances just so you know all of these uh, distances are, um, or the, the the wires are all in the same plane, so they're all vertical distance of 20 feet, 20 feet, 20 feet. So hopefully that'll, uh, yeah, that'll put us in a good place. All right, and then we have force D, which we know to be 100 pounds. Our first step that we're going to do is let's make, uh, let's sum the forces in the x direction. So let's look in the x direction. The weight doesn't do anything. Force C doesn't do anything. It's just that's that's X component is zero. Um, oh, it's just so you know the weight is directly below the origin. Um, so what we have in the positive X direction, 
we have the force of B due to X and in the negative X direction we have the force of D due to X. The next direction we'll do is uh, let's do uh, some of the, oh right, uh, this equals zero. Some of the forces in the Z direction, let's do Z next, is going to be zero and that's going to be, um, let's see, that's coming into the screen, that's going to be the force of C in the Z direction, that's negative, plus we're going to do the force of D in the, in the Y direction, or sorry, in the Z direction, in the Z direction. Finally, some of our forces in the Y direction, this is our vertical, we're going to make this equal to zero, we have in the negative direction, we have um, negative force of weight. Now let's all these vertical components. So we're going to have everything in, um, you know, each, each one of those wires is pulling up. Force of B in the Y direction. Force of C in the Y direction. And then finally, force of D in the Y direction. Great. Now, we know, let's talk approach. Let's, let's kind of talk about our strategy for something like this because the reality is you need a strategy on these problems. And um, for right now, the types of problems we're starting off with, you can just kind of go with what you know and just kind of find stuff out from then. But in the real world, you need to know what you're looking for and how you're going to do it before you even start. Now, we know the force of D. So we can find the force of D in the X direction. Remember how we did that? It's uh, the distance in the X divided by distance in total. You know, that, that was a topic we just learned. Well, if we know that, we can find the force in, of B in the X direction. If we know force of D in the Z direction, we can find the force of C in the Z direction. And if we know it in the Z direction, we can find it total. That said, we have force B, C, and D. We can figure out what they are in the Y direction and find the total weight. That said, let's make our first equation. Force of D in the X direction. Now, if we remember our equation, we know force of D in the X direction divided by the force of D total equals the distance of D in the X direction divided by the distance of D total. All right, well, let's see what, let's, uh, let's solve that for force of D in uh, the X direction. Force of D, X equals distance DX over distance DT times force of DT. We know how to find the distance of D total. Pythagorean theorem in three dimensions. Actually, in this one, it's well, in this one it is, it's three dimensions. We know what the distance of D is in the X direction. So what I'll do here is I will um, take a moment to write down, sorry, I will take a moment to write down the uh, equation with all the numbers. Go ahead and see if you can do it. Pause now. Welcome back. I've written down, uh, so what we first did is we found the total distance, 25.5. We took the, uh, plugged that into the equation, 100 pounds. We found that the force of D in the X direction is 58.8 pounds. Great. Well, let's look at this equation over here. The force of D in the X direction, that also equals the force of B in the X direction. So we now know the force of B in the X direction is 58.8 pounds. Great. Well, let's use our theory to find out what the total force is. Um, we take the force of B in the X direction. We use the X component. So we know what the X component of the force is. Well, let's turn that around and find the total force. So the force of B in the X direction divided by the force of B total is the same as the distance of B in the X direction 
divided by the distance of B total. Using the Pythagorean theorem, go ahead and uh, pause this now and I will I, and see if you can figure out what the force of B total is. Great, now let's take a look at what we have here. Force of B total, let's, uh, where, are we, where are we looking? Force of B total is force of BX times our distances. We use our Pythagorean theorem over here, 58.8 multi 20, times 22.4 over 10. You know how to do all this. Our final result is 131.5. Now I want you to take this idea and apply it now to the force of D in the Z direction. Solve for the force of C in the Z direction. And use that information to find the force of D in the Y direction, force of C in the Y direction, force of B in the Y direction. Get that far. And I'm going to put this on pause and for about five, so go ahead and pause and when you're ready to move on, play it again. Hopefully you've made some good progress. Let's take a look. First, what we're going to do is look at this equation. Let's find force of D in the Z direction. So we move down, we set up our standard uh, force, a component of force divided by the component total is a distance component distance of that component divided by the distance total, we find that the force of D in the Z direction is 19.6 pounds. Um, that equals the force of C in the Z direction. Using the force of C in the Z direction, we can find the force of C total. So here I've, uh, here, let's move this up. So here I have found um, the total distance right here. You should have come up with the force of C total is now 80.8 pounds. Great. Now we're making progress. The next step we're going to do is uh, let's go to, um, we have the total force of C. We have the total force of D, obviously that was 100. And we have the total force of B. The next thing we want to do is let's find the Y components. Right here we know that the force for any of these, B, C, or D, is the Y component of the force is equal to the total force times the distance in the Y direction divided by the total distance. So what I've done in this case is I've basically done that exact same equation for B, C, and D. We get our Y components of each of the forces. Now we can return to our original equation right here, this original equation. Let's uh, let's move that down. All right, I've I've put it here. Put the original equation here in the y direction. Move the force due to the weight to one side. Added the numbers, and we get our total force is 274.2 pounds. Now, if you're really close to that, that's great. There's some rounding errors in here, but I'm hoping that what we've shown you here is working our way through using vectors in three dimensions, making regular use of this equation so that we're comfortable with it in different ways. And we've been able to solve a fairly rigorous problem by just going through our X, Y, and Z components and coming up with an answer. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll see you next time around for some new ideas.